Our understanding of the Muskie must begin with us realizing the relevance of our decision and the impact these decisions will have on our outcome. The muskie is at least a very evolved and efficient predator, utilizing every appropriate sense when necessary. When the hunt is on, the muskie may only rely on one or two of their senses. However, as nature dictates, things will go wrong, forcing the muskie to rely on two, three, or even more senses in concert. Like all vertebrates, fish have sense organs that tell them what is happening in their environment. These organs enable them to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. In addition, almost all fish have a sensory organ called the lateral line system, which enables them to touch objects at a distance. Fish also have various other senses that help them meet the conditions of life underwater. Touch and the lateral line system are closely related. Most fish, and especially the muskie, have a well-developed sense of touch. Nerve endings throughout the skin react to the slightest pressure and temperature changes. The lateral line system is responsible for sensing these changes in the muskie's environment. The lateral line consists mainly of a series of tiny canals just under the skin. A main canal runs along each side of the trunk with branches of these two canals extending onto the head. A muskie senses the flow of water around it as a series of vibrations. These vibrations enter the lateral line through pores and activate certain sensitive areas in the line. If the flow of water around a muskie changes, the pattern of vibration sensed through the lateral line also changes. Nerves relay this information to the brain and the predator responds. Sound travels through a median such as water and arrives as a series of pressure oscillations between high and low pressure. Also, as a general rule, higher pitch sounds are more directional while it's hard to localize low pitch sounds. The ability of a muskie to detect presence of sounds has been well known by ecologists and anglers familiar with the lateral line. The lateral line senses movement of water around the fish. Although it's hard to imagine how the muskie perceives that outside world through the lateral line, since humans have no comparable sense. However, it is believed fish with significant damage to the lateral line are subject to difficulty when sensing prey, predators, and other objects in their environment. All fish have a sense of smell, some more highly developed than others. In most fish, the olfactory organs consist of two pouches, one on each side of the snout. The pouches are lined with nerve tissue that is highly sensitive to odors from substances in the water. A nostril at the front of each pouch allows water to enter the pouch and pass over the tissue. The water leaves the pouch through the nostril at the back. There she is. Olfactory sampling in fish has thought to be a relatively involuntary behavior. Muskies have taste buds in various parts of their mouth, both inside and out. We often see characteristics of these organs exemplified when the water temps fall below the 60 degree range and the muskie displays a tasting characteristic as it follows our offerings. This could be why some anglers prefer to pull live bait during late seasons. A muskie skeleton provides a framework for the head, trunk, tail, and fins. The central framework for the trunk and tail is the backbone. It consists of many separate segments of bone or cartilage called vertebrae. In bony fish, each vertebra has a spine at the top, and each tail vertebra has a spine at the bottom. The dorsal fins are supported by structures of bone and cartilage, which are rooted in tissue above the backbone. The caudal fin is supported by the tail structure, and the anal fin is supported by structures of cartilage below the backbone. Ribs are attached to the vertebrae. A musky skull consists chiefly of a brain case and supports for the mouth, gills, eyes, and brain. Pectoral fins of the musky are attached to the back of the skull by a structure called the pectoral girdle. The pelvic fins are supported by the structure called the pelvic girdle, which is supported by a muscular tissue in the abdomen. Like all vertebrates, fish have three types of muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, and heart muscles. Fish use their skeletal muscles to move their bones and fins. A fish's flesh consists almost entirely of skeletal muscles. They are arranged one behind the other in broad vertical bands. As a result, the fish can bend the front part of its body in one direction while bending its tail in the opposite direction. Most fish make such movements with their bodies to swim. A muskie's smooth muscles and heart muscles work automatically. The smooth muscles are responsible for operating such internal organs as the stomach and intestines, while heart muscles are formed to operate the heart. 
A muskie's eyes differ from those of land vertebrates in several ways. For example, a muskie can see to the right and to the left at the same time. This ability makes up in part for the fact that the muskie has no neck, thus restricting any rotation of its head. Muskies also lack eyelids. In land vertebrates, eyelids help moisten the eyes and shield them from sunlight. A muskie's eyes are kept moist by the flow of water around them. Shielding from the sunlight is not necessary because sunlight is seldom extremely bright underwater. However, when removed from their element, the eyes of the muskie are greatly exposed and caution should be taken in these regards. It is also thought that the muskie has a higher rate of rods, which are light receptors, to cones, which are color receptors, thus making the species more alert to light than color. This analogy promotes well the fact that muskies appear to respond to contrasting images and prefer to do so in lower light. Yes, stay with her. Oh, you got it? <laughs> Oh, that's a biggie, Carol. Okay. That's a biggie, Carol. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's my fault, my fault. That's okay. Mm. Come up with it. Come up with it. I'm trying. Sometimes. Okay. Come, come this way. Come this way. Oh, she's got to come up again. She's got to come up. Oh. Bring her up slowly. Bring her up slowly. Easy. Bring her this way. Bring her this way. Bring her this way. Keep her head down. Bring her, bring her this way. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring her this way. See, I can't take her when she's going down, so just bring her this way. Come on, girl. Get in there. Jump in. Come on. Bring her this way. She's good. Okay, come back this way. Come back this way. Oh! 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 Man. Oh! Man. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Okay, we're pushing 47 oh, plus. Oh, man. Holy moly. We're pushing 47 plus. Okay. Bob, let okay. me get the net. Oh, man. Oh, smokes. Okay. Oh, isn't that beautiful, huh? Yes, it is. Look at this, folks. Is that gorgeous or what, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Absolutely. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Carol, here. Give me a second. We need to know. Folks, we're dealing with her personal best fish. So I'm going to take a second and measure this fish. How relaxed it is. Yeah, she's fine. If she bursts away, yeah. <laughs> if she bursts away, I'm going 47 on her. Be my guess. What does it say? What's it say, folks? 40. You got your thumb covering, Bob. 40. 47. Seven. 47. Right, right on the money. Oh, right calibrated on the money. eyeballs. Yes, he does. Yeah, on the money, folks. On 47. The money. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're more than you. welcome. Oh. I'm sliming you up. You realize that, okay. don't you? Okay. I'll, I can be all right, you know what I say? That's three fish, folks, in 18 minutes. I say it's time to put a cap on this baby. Go home, call it a night. I think the good Lord gave us what we can.